Hey there, it is I, Snow Runt Pyro slash Pyro, and it's time for another one of these Luna Lua tutorial videos. Oh man. So, to last time I mentioned that we're going to be covering accessing the player this time around. But there are two things really important that I want to cover right now. First of all, the probably the most important function in Luna Lua is just mem or like whatever the class you want to modify, colon mem. This function just allows you to access any of the offsets, which are basically settings for anything. Players, warps, blocks, NPCs, anything. So this is the page for player offsets on uh, Wohol Wiki slash PG Wiki. This documents almost every single memory address that you want for the player. So basically how you would use the memory function for the player is that you would type in player colon mem and then there are either two or three arguments depending on what you're going to do. The first argument is the memory address. Don't put the PC plus here, you just want this. So let's just have, hmm, let's pick something simple current power up. So we want to put in that. Then you want to check what memory type this is. So usually it's going to be field war, but there's other stuff like field float, field defloat, uh, etc. So for 112, it's field words. So you want to type in comma field word. Now, if you were just checking if this was e equal to something, like if you were checking if the player was big, You'd stop here and just do like double equals two. But if you wanted to make the player big, you do comma two. So three arguments if you want to set it, two if you just want to check. Uh, the other thing I want to mention is that there is um, a really important thing. If you ever don't know what a value is going to be equal to, you like you want to set something you want to set an address to a specific thing, but you don't know what the correct value is, you can do this. Text.print. And as the first argument, you can just straight up put the entire memory thing in here. And just have two arguments because we're just checking. So here, we are gonna hit test and it'll draw a zero at the top of the screen. And then once I drop, or once I land on the ice, then it's going to change to negative one because zero by zero A is the value for if you're on slippery ground or not. So now we just need to, now we know that you just need to set it to negative one if you wanted to make yourself on slippery ground. So let's just do a simple thing, uh, delete that, and then put negative one as the third argument. And then this code We'll just make Mario always be on slippery ground, even though it's not set to be so. Also, this has an unintentional side effect of making air control really awkward. But hey, this is a good, good time to mention an important memory value. Uh, these four, where are they? These four. Uh, layer con the layer contact stuff. So say you don't want to have that weird that's uh, like acting as if you're on ice in the air. So you want to take zero by one four six, which is bottom state, which means it'll be zero if you're not touching the ground. It'll be two if you're touching the ground. So let's just have a quick if statement if player if player mem blah 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 blah, blah field word is equal to negative two then or just straight up just regular two then then put them on slippery ground so now i'm on the ice on regular ground but my physics are completely normal in the air so let's go back to um let's do another quick thing let's bring back the counter from last episode. Let's just make it so 
the counter increases when you're on the ground. So yeah, you can just put all your variables, your arithmetic, more if statements in here. So this is only going to run if you're on the ground. There you go. See, once I jump, it's not adding to the counter. You can also do a couple other silly or neat things like here, zero, 0 times 160 is the timer for all your projectiles. So let's just do something silly. Let's just make the counter uh, always 0 so we can sh just mash the button and do whatever we want. Just, just have all the projectiles. Spawn a fire flower. And now you can just mash the button and there's fireballs all over the place. It's crazy. The, the memory functions are seriously powerful and you're probably going to be using it for like everything you do because it lets you do so much stuff. So now's the time to introduce uh, another important function. Function on key down. This only has one argument and for now I'm just going to put it as key code. This will check if you are pressing down any key. So they, they're they all constants. So for jump it'd be key jump. Uh, run is key x. Spin jump. There's spin jump. Key run is tanuki key or alternate run key. There's key select, start, all that good stuff. So let's just, let's do something simple. If key code, so let's just check if the player presses the jump key. Let's make a infinite jump. So you don't have to have a memory value for this. Luna Lua has some built-in variables that you can set for the player. So here we would set player speed y equals negative 10. Negative goes upwards, positive goes downwards. So here, now all I have to do is press the jump key and we'll just fly everywhere. Or let's just do something silly. We'll have x be set to negative 10. Now you can be pushed back. Be aware though that the player can fight against the speed y. Like here I'm holding right and it's, uh, it's cutting the momentum. But if I don't hold right, it'll launch me back. So just be aware of that when you're setting these variables. Or we can just straight up change their coordinates. So player y equals player y minus 64. Um, every block in SMABX is 32 pixels. So all this is going to do is move Mario up two blocks every time you press the jump key, along with jumping. But if you only wanted to have this weirdo teleport, then you could fix that. You could use 0 by 11e. So we'll just make it so the player never actually does a real jump. Field word, 0. Or actually, it's a uh, uh, 1. Because this is the flag if they can or can't jump. So we're just going to make it so we always can't jump. So now the player is never going to be able to jump. They'll just teleport all over the place. Although it's a little wonky because there's still falling speed and all of that. But we can just teleport all the way, probably. Hooray! So now let's do something more useful for level design. Let's give Mario a double jump. So let's just have a variable, a uh, local jump counter, and we'll set this to two. So this variable will basically represent how many times Mario can jump. So we'll check, first let's just get this out of the way. We'll check if Mario is on the ground. And if he's on the ground, 
reset the jump counter back to two. Then we'll reuse this code for the double jump. You can combine if statements by just doing and. So first you want to check if jump counter is greater than zero. Um, and then set the speed y first of all, and then subtract the jump counter. You might be thinking now, but won't this give Mario a triple jump? But actually, he'll use up the one jump at the same time he jumps. So this will just give him a singular double jump. So if you wanted to give him a trip, the triple jump, actual triple jump, you just have you'd have three. So boing boing, mashing the key right now. Or you could just do something dumb and give him 10 jumps, because why not? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Woohoo! Nine jumps. I meant nine, not ten. Wee! Let's combine this with on NPC kill from last video. It, there's a game series called Jumper, which has these arrows that reset your double jump if you collect them. So let's just do the same for coins. So the Super Mario World coin NPC ID is 33. So let's just change this back to only a double jump. Function on NPC kill event. If NPC ID ID is equal to 33, then jump count is equal to two. Well, actually, we want to do this to one because then it would give Mario two jumps if it reset. So now, oh no, I'm out of double jumps. But now I collect the coin and get one more jump back. So let's just spam these all over the place. So you jump, 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 get into the coin, and you can jump again. Or let's modify this code a little bit. Let's make it add to the jump counter. So now we just have a bajillion coins everywhere. Run in here. And now every coin you grab will add a double jump. Oh man. Wonder where I'm gonna run out of jumps now. <laughs> but it'll still reset when you hit the ground. So you can like you can like chain these. And this could make for some interesting level design. So last thing I'll cover for today, uh, let's do function on jump. This event will trigger every single time the player makes a legitimate jump. Uh, sadly, not any short hops, only a big jump. That's just the limitation of it. But it can still be useful. So let's do something like... Let's just do something silly. Cause a massive earthquake every single time you jump. That's simple enough. And I keep using the double jump code because why not? We Doesn't work with... Doesn't work with the double jump, but you can just fix that by putting the earthquake in the jump code. Or let's do something like...
Let's make him turn into a fairy on oh, jump. Sure. We're on a silly streak today. Though I don't know how... What the value should be. So let's just comment that out by putting two double slashes. And debug this real quick. So you got a zero in the top corner. Grab a fairy pendant, place it. Okay, it needs to be set to negative one. Uncomment that, negative one. And delete that since we know what to set it to. So now on short hop, she won't turn into a fairy, but big hop, it'll turn you into a fairy for a second for some reason. Um. Well, that's, uh, that's interesting. I wasn't expecting that to happen. But that, that's the world of Lua. You just try dumb things, and you'll get magic to happen like this. It's pretty great. We could combine this and make it so if jump counter is equal to zero, then set it. So once our jumps are all used up, we'll just turn to a fairy and stay a fairy because it's an on loop. Uh, that's something I wasn't expecting to happen. I'm sorry for all of your ears. What is with me and having dumb things happen? <sighs> At the end of every video. Although that does look kind of cool, although it'll probably destroy everyone's ears. It also actually works kind of well as like a, a, a slower of falling. Although, again, I apologize for all of your ears. But, yeah, I've, that's pretty much it for accessing the player. There's other variables. Like, for... For, like, if they're holding down a key. Yeah, I should cover this. There's another important function on input update. Which is basically just on loop, except it's more powerful. So here, you can set all the player key holding code. So now the player will never be able to go left. Oops. Fix this real quick. Now the player can never go left ever! Hooray! Yeah, they can't be set to zero, they have to be false or true. Or we can just change this... to run a key pressing. So now, I can never run even though I'm holding the run key. Or say you want to disable jumping altogether because you're evil. Oh no, I can't jump anymore, even though I'm mashing the jump key. Or let's just do something dumb, like make them always press the jump key. That doesn't work at all. But just like, just try new things, just mess around. So yeah, that's a lot of the basics of accessing the player. There's a couple other built-in variables, but I just won't cover them for now. But hopefully you found this video helpful. As this has been me, and I have been tutorializing the Luna Luma language of Super Mario Bros. X. Goodbye, people!